look into the Word of God and find the answers. I'm just um, gullible enough to believe that God's Word has the answers for everything. I really do. Hope you, are, I hope you are that gullible. Amen. Uh, that's a good gullible, and that's actually not gullible. That's scriptural, and that's biblical. Amen. But uh, I want to uh, speak to you for a few moments on, and uh, we weren't just going to take the Word of God, and uh, we're going to take uh, some time here tonight to try to answer a question. What is that question? Would God, or does God, want me to participate in Halloween? We're going to ask that question. All right? And we're going to study uh, what Halloween is, and we're going to study what the Word of God says, and we're just going to come to some conclusions. All right? And, uh, hey, listen, it's... Should never, it should never bother anybody to ask the Lord, Lord, is this something that I should do or should not do? Amen? Yeah. And any time that we would ever come to a place where we say, well, I'm not asking God that, then we're, at, we're, in, we're in trouble. Yeah. We really are. All right? Let me give you a, a, a little, uh, uh, well, I'll say a couple things. First of all, uh, I have no idea, uh, as far as I know, not a person in this church uh, celebrates Halloween. If you do, I don't know. All right? I don't brought up a little prop with me tonight. I do not. Do not uh, sit in the stores with the sword of the Lord open, waiting for you to come by to see what you purchase. You know, I, I could. You know, you remember the old time shows with the eye holes? Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Did they just buy a pumpkin? I wonder what they're going to do with that pumpkin. I wouldn't follow them home. I do not do that. All right? I do not. Believe it or not, I have better things to do with my time than do that. All right? And uh, so I do not do that. But um, and let me say it this way. All right? Um, my, uh, and I, I've given this just, just very briefly. You know, um, when I was born, I was born, uh, my mom was saved. My dad was lost. And uh, by the grace of God, um, you know, most of the time that turns out tragic. Uh, but in the mercy of God, uh, God saved my dad. My mom got right with the Lord. All right. Uh, I'm just a little boy. I'm very, very little. All right. And guess what I did every year on the 31st of October? I went trick or treat. Amen. All right. Every year. And I'm sure I was the cutest. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but all uh, right. I mean, every year, every year did that. All right. Every year we participated in that. Every year we got the costume. Every year we got the candy. Every year we. You know, cut out the pumpkin every year. We, we did all of that every single year. All right? And uh, but somewhere along the line, uh, we started growing in the Lord. And by the way, I hope we're still growing in the Lord. Amen, Amen Mom, right? Amen, right? We're still growing in the Lord, all right? We haven't arrived. I'm not arrived. There's a lot of things I need to uh, work on and a lot of things you need to work on. Amen. We all do. And if you don't think you need to work on anything, boy, you need to work on some stuff. <laughs> Amen, all right? And guess what? So we started hearing some teaching uh, about Halloween. Well, everybody participates in Halloween, I mean, right? I mean, so anyways, well, guess what? Uh, started understanding it from uh, the perspective of what it is. Started understanding it from the biblical perspective. And guess what? We no longer participate in Halloween. All right? And so I uh, just want to draw some things and, uh, you know, uh, you know you're a youth, I've also brought up this prop. You know you're a youth, or, or were a youth pastor, when you have a file that says Halloween. Amen? And uh, I, I really enjoyed being a youth pastor. I really did. And I tried to teach uh, the young people that I had the opportunity to be their youth pastor practical things. Uh, taught a lot on music. Taught a lot on friends. Uh, taught a lot on things that young people are going through. And, um, and try to fortify them. The youth group that I had uh, when we were down in the state of Georgia uh, was probably, would you say, where's my wife? Would you say 75% parents unchurched and 25% church? I think that's probably a good perspective. And we're always constantly trying to reach teenagers. So every year, and almost every year, I would teach on what the Bible says about Halloween. You know why? Because we always had fresh teenagers, all right? And try to give them a fresh perspective on that. Um, obviously, it's something I don't uh, teach on uh, every single year uh, anymore, but um, I've, just, I've just been amazed, really, uh, though I was get jumped on, on social media today and, and uh, talked, uh, saw an, an independent Baptist preacher uh, defending all the practices of Halloween, right. and I'm like, <laughs> and uh, anyways, uh, I pulled my hair out, but I don't have any, so I just kept on scrolling, I just kept on scrolling. All right, now, and I, I, I shared my testimony because, you know, the thing is, 
Uh, maybe you're going to go out tomorrow night, and man, you've already got the jack o lantern fired up, man. You got to cut it out. You got you got your costume picked out. You got the candy, and you're ready for all that. Here's what I'd ask you to do. All right, find out what God's word says, find out what it's about, and ask the Holy Spirit of God to lead and guide you. Yes. Amen. And you, you, listen, you're never going to go wrong with the leadership of the Lord in your life. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. if, 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 if that's wrong. If that's bad, then what are you doing here tonight in the first place? Amen. All right. So maybe, you know, there, there may be somebody here tonight. You're like, he's going to preach against what? Amen. That's probably the first thing, the first time I've ever heard preach on word against what? You know? And um, so uh, just call him here. Amen. All right. So let's, let's look at some things here tonight. And we're going to eventually get to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 18 in just a moment. But really, the, the outline that I want to give you uh, this evening, really, you could use this outline for any single subject matter that there is. And so, first of all, and I'll go ahead and give the outline now. First of all, we're going to talk about the historical perspective. How did Halloween begin? Number two, we're going to talk about the modern perspective. How did we get to where Halloween is today? The third thing is the biblical perspective. What does God think? Now, that'll be the most important thing. Amen. And then number four, the Christian's perspective. What should I do? With Halloween. All right. We'll do that for just a few moments uh, here this evening. All right. And, and by the way, okay, again, I got a file. All right. So this is, I, I'm going to try to take this and do this. All right. So, you know, I'm not going to get into every preacher, preacher, you didn't mention that I got the file for it. And then I do. It's in there. All right. I don't have time to all that. All right. I'm just going to kind of streamline this thing for a few minutes uh, on this evening. All right. Now, so let's let's and, 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 and but I hope I hope there's at least some curiosity of why do we do all this stuff? I mean, why do we do all this stuff? Right? Why are all of these things associated that, that, that ever dawned hopefully it dawned on you like right. why are all these things? And they, and they all have origins, yep. as you will see, all right? Uh, from the jack-o'-lanterns to everything. Yep. All, right, all have uh, an origin, and we're going to talk about that um, uh, for just a few moments. Now, so what it has become is just this cute little uh, quote-unquote innocent thing, right? Just, oh, it's just, it's, a, but the question is, is it really? All right, that's the question. Is it really just a cute little uh, innocent thing? A lot of statistics I can throw at you. Um, first of all, it's not a national holiday. I had that in my notes, and my notes are a little old, so I had to, you know, you guys Google everything. And it's still not a national holiday. It's only a national holiday in Ireland, as far as I know. Still not a national holiday, but it's the third most celebrated annual event, are you listening, by adults. Yeah. By adults. Yeah. After Christmas and New Year's, it's the third most participated uh, party among partygoers among adults. Over 90% of American families uh, participate in it, uh, and it's the, the only event that supersedes decorations is Christmas. Mm -hmm. Halloween is number two uh, in uh, decorations. All right, now, so again, I, I hope and pray uh, that you uh, will just let the Lord speak to your heart, all right, and, and really put all preconceived everything away. Well, we've always, well, God's word trumps that. Okay. All right, we never, well, God's word trumps that. The Bible says in Romans 3, verse 4, let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. In other words, if God says something and every single person says something different, God is true and everybody is wrong. Amen. That's what it says. All right. And so we just need to set aside preconceived notions and take a biblical look uh, at, at this thing. All right. So let's for just a few moments, I'm going to try to streamline this as quickly as I can. And um, so let's talk about the historical perspective. How did Halloween begin? Well, I'm going to say that every single Halloween tradition goes way back, all right? And so uh, where did it all begin? Well, uh, it, was, it began in the land of Ireland, and I'll talk about that for just a minute. Um, it finds its roots in the, what's called the Celtic religion or the Celtic religion, all right? The, the Celts or the Celts, whatever you want to call them, were the Irish, they were the Scottish, they were the Welsh, these were the Aryan people. Now listen, they migrated from Asia to Europe. Well, guess what? If you migrate, you're going to also take your whatever your beliefs are to that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you move to Germany tomorrow, 
you would take what you believe with you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so these people migrated, they, they settled there, uh, there in, in, in Ireland, they, uh, they were practicing all these things. Well, guess what they brought with them? They brought with them from the area of India, and they brought Hinduism, all right? They brought all these things, all right? Now, in that group of people, there were a group of people called the Druids. Yeah. And the Druids um, uh, were an established order of priests that led in this false religion. Now, like the Hindus, the Druids recognized a system of worship that exalted a plurality of the gods of nature. And by the way, it's interesting, you know, we, and I, I, I hit on this this morning, I think, I think about as, as, as much as I could, but it's amazing how enlightened we are today. Yeah. And it's, and we're, and we're falling for the oldest lies in the book, yeah. but we're so smart. You know, we have these, these, uh, recovering fundamentalists that hate the independent fundamental Baptists. They're just the old neo, new, new evangelicals, right. all right? They are, they're not the new about them, they think they are. It just goes on and on and on. But, but these guys were uh, the gods of nature, right? I mean, you know, and, and we're worshiping today. What, you ever heard of Earth Day? All right, Mother Earth and, and all these things, all right? It's, it's all of that stuff, all right? And it's derived, but this was derived, it goes all the way back to the people of India. Now, they would celebrate, and this is hundreds of years ago, they would celebrate two days that were big to them. The first one was May the 1st, and it was known by the Druids as Beltane. And it was a celebration of the beginning of the summer season, all right? And it centered upon the god of the sun, who was called Belanus, B-E-L-A-N-U-S, all right? The other date was October 31st. They celebrated that, now stay with me. And that was known among the Druids as Sam Wayne, or Samhain, as we pronounce it. S-A-M-H-A-I-N, all right? And that celebrated the end of the summer uh, and the beginning of winter, all right? And it preceded the Celtic New Year of November the 1st, all right? And so, uh, and now, now think about this. It was centered upon the worship of the Lord of Death. Yep. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this, is not, this is not these skeletons. Yeah. And all of this, this is not accidental. Right. All right. They celebrated the worship of the Lord of death and the Lord of the dead. Because here's what they believed. They believed that Sam Wayne, Sal Wayne, however you want to pronounce that, that on that day, October the 31st, that the spirits of the dead were permitted to roam through the earth. They believed that the gates that separated the physical from the spiritual uh, were opened on that night. All right. And so they would have a festival. They would make a, a festival on that. And, and uh, they would offer, guess what? Treats to the spirits. You ever heard of that? Yeah. All right. And guess what? If you did not provide treats, the spirits would play, are you ready for it? Tricks on you. All right. They would dress up in costumes, portraying spirits. Wild animals that were worn to, to hide from the roaming dead. And also they had a, another tradition. This is not new. Called jack-o'-lanterns. Yeah. Due to the, and I'm going to read this, due largely to the Celtic uh, or Celtic legend of Irish Jack. Let me read you about Irish Jack. Mm -hmm. Irish Jack was, according to Irish legend, a drunk who played a trick on the devil. After convincing Satan to climb an apple tree, Jack carved a cross in the trunk of the tree so that the devil could not come down. Jack then made the devil swear that he would not hurt him for the rest of his life. According to the legend, when Jack died, he was turned away from heaven because of his wicked life. Upon arriving at the gates of hell, he was met by the devil. Because of the trick he had played on him, the devil turned him away as well. It was believed that Jack was eating a turnip at the time when he met with the devil. The legend states that as, that, that as he turned to walk away, the devil hurled a fiery coal at him. Jack picked up the coal and put it inside the turnip. Irish Jack then used his jack-o'-lantern to light the way for his rejected soul as he wandered the earth. As the tradition continued to be passed down, people eventually began using pumpkins to carve and light accordance with this tale. 
All right. And so the, the, you see all these things. All right. These traditions go back hundreds of years. All right. And I just want to tell you any any sort of of honest study says that Druidism is severely demonic. Yeah. yeah. Severely demonic. Yeah. Uh, and it paved the way for the modern day. I mean, I mean, talk about Wicca, Satanism, witchcraft, all of these. All right. And so carried back all the way back those hundreds of years ago. Now, how did we get to this place today? And so that's that's my second point is uh, the modern perspective. How do we get to where Halloween is today? All right. Now, uh, <laughs> no, nobody would say that, uh, quote unquote, Halloween is a holiday or a holy day. Uh, would may, may say that. But I can tell you this, uh, that witches and wizards and, and all of that group still look at tomorrow as their great day of the year. Absolutely. They still do. All right, and so um, you need to understand that, that that Halloween is based in paganism, it is based in Satanism, it is based in witchcraft, it is based in the occult, all right? So how did it get from that to people are going to look at it tomorrow and just, oh, this is so fun, this is so great, this is so uh, wonderful? Well, it goes back several hundred years, and it goes back really into 300s and 400s, where Constantine... Uh, you remember that story from your history, right? He, uh, he saw the sign of the cross and he <laughs> conquered. Well, guess what? He, he made Christianity, in quote, which is a really loose term. All right. Uh, he, he made it. You had to be a Christian. Again, loose term. All right. So guess what they did? They took all the pagan things that they did and they Christianized them. All right, they did. They Christianized them, right? So, uh, so we have this wicked practice that we're doing, but we have to be Christians now. So we're going to rename that practice, and we're going to give it a Christian name. All right, and that's really uh, what, what happened, all right? And so what happened is, as you fast forward, and again, uh, stay with me, in AD 35, 835, in 835 AD, Pope Gregory IV declared November the 1st the Celtic New Year. That, and the Day of the Dead... He changed that to All Saints Day. And the day before that, he recognized it as All Hallows Eve. Halloween. We have shortened that day. All right? And so, and again, so you have the quote-unquote Christianizing, loose term, of these terms. All right? Now, and so, uh, and, and it, just, it just continues. I mean, I could go into the 1500s. Martin Luther, you know, the 95 Theses on the wall and the Protestant Reformation uh, and, and, and all of those. Uh, and so all these people are now reinventing this, changing names and all of that. Uh, but again, uh, we're just putting new labels on the same old wickedness. Yeah. All right. I understand that. All right. And so um, and then, of course, and then where did our forefathers come from? Well, our forefathers came from that part of the world. Right? Came from there, came from the Europe, and all that. What do you bring with you? You bring all of those traditions with you. It's interesting when you study it, though, that Halloween was not popular among adults until the 1970s. What do you have in the 60s? You have the sexual revolution. You have the anarchy. You have all of that. The drugs, pharmakia, witchcraft, wickedness, and all that. The hippie culture, the drug culture, and all of that. And now... Ever since then, it, Halloween has skyrocketed among adults in the last 40 or 50 years, yeah. whatever it has been. All right? But here's what I want you to see is all of those, all of our quote-unquote traditions of Halloween today go back hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. All right? And they come from paganism. They come from <laughs> witchcraft. They come from, it, it, from, from wickedness. Uh, they come from the occult. They come from all of those things. All right. Now, number three. Number three. Then, what is uh, a bib what is the biblical perspective? What does what does God think? All right. Now, now let's so let's go to Deuteronomy chapter eighteen. All right. Deuteronomy chapter number eighteen. <clears throat> and again, we need to we need to think biblically about everything. All right, and some people would accuse me of being narrow-minded, and I would say thank you, and uh, and uh, and I, I really do. I hope to be this narrow. 
Amen? Amen. And I hope you hope to be that narrow. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, Deuteronomy chapter 18, and if you would, look at verse number 9. Deuteronomy 18, verse number 9. The Bible says, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, yeah. or that useth divination, or an observer of times, yeah. or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. I don't know about you, it kind of sounds like God takes it serious. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God that drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observance of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. Amen. Now, he says, when you go to a land that, that does those things, you're not to participate. All right? And then he goes into detail in case you're wondering who it is. Now, let's, let's define some terms here. Look at verse number 10. You have the word divination. Divination is using witchcraft to attempt to foretell future events. The observer of times in verse number 10. The Hebrew word means to make, to appear, to conjure up. The idea of using magic. Can I just sit, pause in the message right here? And it is amazing. I, I don't know what the percentage would be. Uh, I don't want to do deep research on this because of how I believe it affects my own heart and soul. But it is amazing the, the amount, the overwhelming amount of television and cartoons and those things that promote witchcraft yep. and yes. ghosts yes. and the demonic. Yes. I mean, it, it is everywhere. And by the way, it's not starting when they're 30 and 40. Yes, sir. I'm telling you what, you would be surprised if you did an honest <laughs> research of Disney. Yes. Yeah. And how much of that is demonic? The spirits and all that. And by the way, Satan, let's give credit where credit is due. Satan's not dumb. Right. All right? He's an enticer. He's a deceiver. He's a charmer. All right? And, and, and you say, well, uh, you know, I, I just take all these things, you know, Halloween and all that. I take that lightly. Well, you know what? If I were the devil, that's what I would hope you would do. Yeah. yeah. Right. I would hope you'd laugh at it. I'd hope you think it's funny. I'd hope you think that, that the demonic and, and witchcraft and evil and, and all that, I hope you would think, I would hope if I were the devil, that you would think it's great and wonderful. And again, kids are programmed. I'm talking about when they're one and two years old. Right. Yeah. Watch this stuff on television. Yep. I think it's great and wonderful and innocent and no big deal. <clears throat> Back to the message. Verse number 10, he says, an enchanter. The word carries the idea of one who observes the signs or omens. A witch, a title given to one who practices witchcraft or sorcery. Verse 11, he talks about a charmer. The Hebrew word means to join, unite, or make an alliance. It seems to carry the idea of making a pact with the spirit realm. Yep. This person tries to bring the physical and spiritual worlds together. <clears throat> Verse 11 talks about the consulter with familiar spirits. This is one who speaks with demons that masquerade as individuals who have died and impersonate those individuals. Yeah. Speaks of wizards in verse 11. Wizard comes from a word, root word that means to know or to be instructed. It carries the idea of one uh, instructed in and familiar with magic and witchcraft. Necromancer, verse 11. One who acts as a medium between the living and the dead. And again, we have a fascination with all these things in our world today. All right. Again, the television shows uh, and, 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 and all of that. All right. And, and, and so I'm just saying this. All of this goes back to the demonic doctrines of Druidism. The truth of the matter is it goes all the way back to the pits of hell. Right? Yes. It goes all the way back to the book of Genesis uh, as we preached about this morning. All right. And God says again, uh, you know, I don't care what independent Baptist pastor or whatever wants to put a spin on it or whatever. God's word says in verse 12, all that do these things yeah. are an abomination unto the Lord. All right, they're not to be toyed with. Right. Friend, who knows more about the demonic than God? Nobody. 
No wonder, and over and over, and I don't have time to get into all these verses. Over and over, are you listening tonight? God loves us. And because he loves us, you know what he says? I know what that's going to do. Get away from it. Stay away. Way away. God knows how terrible it is. And listen, don't play around. Well, it's just innocent. No, God says, get away. Don't play around with that stuff. Number four, what should our perspective be? Go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Go ahead and turn it, please. What should our perspective be on this subject? Well, there's some of the interesting things here. I'll try to be brief. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith don't miss this. What are we going to depart from the faith to God? Amen. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Yep. Huh. It almost sounds like God knew what he was talking about when he wrote the Bible, huh? Now notice that. Seducing spirits. All right? And again, all right? And, and it's interesting. It, <laughs> God's word is amazing. The words I, I told you about before that they believed that that was that they were celebrating these wandering spirits. You study the word seducing. You know what the word seducing means? It means to roam or to wander. God warned us of that. Friend, that is not coincidental. That is not coincidental at all. And so we understand. All right. And again, I want to say to you, so, well, it's no big deal. Friend, it is a big deal. Yes. You call it. It's a big deal to the, the, the demonic and all of those things. I just want to ask us some questions tonight. You come, you come to the conclusion between you and the Lord. All right? You know, but, but what's a Christian parent going to do when their children begin to inquire about these things? What are you going to say? What are you going to say uh, when, uh, I mean, when there's, when all these things, all right? I mean, um, and participating in these things, all right? And, 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 and finding out what it is and then we're going to participate. I mean, what are you going to say? Deuteronomy 18, verse number 9. God says, Thou shalt not learn. Go back there. Maybe underline that. Hopefully you will. Deuteronomy 18, verse number 9. The Bible says, Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of these nations. Friend, that's God's love. That's God's wisdom for us. Amen? Mm -hmm. To refuse to participate in the works of these pagans. All right? I want us to look at three verses and we'll be done. All right? Three verses. I mean, before you go any further on this subject, I want to give you three verses. And then you, between you and God. All right? Ephesians 5.11. Why don't you turn there real quick. I'm going to give you a minute to turn there. I got it right here, but I'm going to give you a minute. I got my Bible mark, but I'm going to give you a second. I want you to see these verses. All right? And if you can read these verses... And still practice Halloween after reading them. That's between you and God. All right, my job is to tell you. It's between you and God what you do with it. All right. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 11. Ephesians 5 verse 11. The Bible says. And have no fellowship. With the unfruitful works of darkness. But rather reprove them. Amen. Have no fellowship. No fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them, all right? If, if you cannot at least be um, intellectually honest enough to say that Halloween is shrouded by spiritual darkness, I mean, hello, I mean, again, the yeah, ghosts, yes. the, the, the yeah, skulls, right. the, 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 I mean, all of that, if you cannot at least come to the intellectual honesty that there is spiritual darkness, all right? And if, what is, does God say have some part? No part. None, zero, zip, zilch, not a no part into the works of darkness. But here's the thing. And God says, no, I'm not, but reprove it. Yep. Right. Reprove it. Speaking. Hey, not promote it. Right. Hey, not trunk or treat. Right. We're not promoting it. That's right. We're reproving right. it. I may have gotten myself in trouble with that one. That's all right. 
Amen. Amen. I, I literally, I literally, and this is years ago. I have a pastor, I know him, and he may be watching, so I'm not going to give his name. He went to a church, took a church, went to another church. I mean, right out and took the church in October, kind of like I did three years ago. Brought that, dusted off that Halloween message. And brother, I'm telling you what, he got fired at an independent Baptist church. Am I telling the truth? Am I telling the truth? Nicky would attest to that. He dusted off the Halloween message. They said, out the door you go. Can you believe that? Wow. Oh my. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know what? He was in the wrong church in the wrong he wasn't in the wrong church, he found out he was in the wrong church. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter five, turn there. First Thessalonians chapter five. First Thessalonians five, verse number twenty-two. The Bible says, abstain from all Amen. appearance of evil. Amen. All. All appearance of evil. I mean, the best, I mean, the best thing. I mean, you were talking about rose-colored glasses. You got about nine pairs. The best thing you could say about Halloween with rose-colored glasses, nine pairs, is that it's the appearance of evil. Yeah. That's the best thing you could say with nine pairs of glasses on. And God still says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Now, what does that mean? It means two things. First of all, it means the believers not to do anything that gives the appearance of evil to others. But second of all, it also means to abstain from that which appears to be associated with evil. Right. You cannot be intellectually honest and, be and believe that Halloween is associated with evil. There's no way. Third John. Third John, last verse. Third John, verse 11. Third John, verse 11. The Bible says, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. The word follow there means to imitate or impersonate. And the Bible says, the believer is not to impersonate yep. that which is evil. Mm -hmm. Is Halloween not an impersonation of evil? Yeah. It is. Of course it is. It is. All right? And so uh, I understand that. Now, some may say, well, you know, preacher, you just, you just try and, trying to cramp our style. You just don't want us to have any fun. No, I want you to have good fun. Yeah. Real fun. I, I mean, can I just borrow my brother-in-law's word? Joy. Amen. Amen. There's no joy. There's no joy in that. I'm telling you what we did. We had joy. I'm telling you, uh, just bring it full circle. We went there uh, to Mexico in August. I'm telling you what, we wept over souls. People got saved. We got excited about that and wept over that and joy that was there, seeing a whole city, uh, giving a, a copy of the word of God and visitors come and, and, and all of that. And, 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 to, and to come at, back to the motel room or the hotel in the evening and see literally 15 or 20 young people age 15 to 25 sitting around and not sitting against God and, and, and fellowshipping and rejoicing and, and praising God and singing Hey, listen, that's my kind of fun. Amen. Amen. I don't know what your kind of fun is, but that's my kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Amen. Rejoicing in the Lord. God's not against us having joy. He doesn't want us to be involved in this, this thing. Amen. And so I'm done. But again, you say, well, you know, I've never heard that before. You know what? There was a time I never heard this before. All right. And guess what? He's still working on me Amen. to make me what he wants me to be. All right. Amen. I may have some victory in this area, but you know what? Y'all pray for me. There's about ten other areas God's working on me for. Amen. Anybody else? Yes. Amen. Yes. And you know what I want to do with every single subject with God's help? I want to find out what the subject is. I want to find out what God's word says, and I want to go God's way all the time. Amen. Every time I'm going to go God's way. God helping me. And I want you to go God's way every single time. And I got growing to do. And you got growing to do. Amen. And that means there's some things that need to stop or, or lessen. There's some things that need to increase and increase some more. Amen. Maybe you've never heard this tonight. I'm not picking on you. I'm, I'm really not. I love you. I, 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 I love you. you. Whatever you're doing, you know, again. I'm not going to follow you home tonight, amen? <laughs> I'm not going to follow you home tonight, right? I'm 
I'm going to drive by your house tomorrow night and see if you got any pumpkins lit, lit up, all right? I'm going to do that. Here's what I am going to ask you to do. Do your own, do your own search. If I, if I preach something that's a lie tonight, you take your Bible, you bring your Bible afterwards respectfully and show me where I've been wrong. Show me where I've been wrong historically and show me where I've been wrong biblically. Fair? Mm -hmm. That is fair. We all say, Lord, I just want to please and honor you in every area of my life. Every area of my life. Including this. In this event called Halloween. Maybe they're not. He said, why do you give an invitation after that? Well, here's how we give an invitation after that. First of all, if you don't know the Lord, it would be a good time to get saved. Amen. Amen. And, and while I think the testimonies tonight were perfect, it doesn't make sense to a lost person, Mom, of them. these kind of things, do, do, do they? Right? You know what? When you get saved, God changes everything, doesn't he? You sure does, man. And Sam, <clears throat> when you get saved, God changes everything, doesn't he? Amen. You want to please the Lord. You want to please the Lord. Amen. And there's no desire to please the Lord, and i got to ask you a question. Do you even say? When you get saved, you get a desire to please the one that died for you. Oh, okay. Amen. <laughs> you really think you're going to, I'm trying to quit, but you really think you're going to look at those nail scarred hands someday and cry and complain to the Lord that you gave up trick or treat? <laughs> doesn't, that, doesn't, that even, doesn't that even that statement sound foolish? Yes, it, is. it does. Amen? Uh, really? Amen? Whatever we give up for God, God help us. Man, He gave it up. Amen. 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 I'll, I'll, Maybe you get saved. Number two, maybe you say, man, Lord, I, I never heard any of that before. But Lord, here's what I'll do. If that's what you want me to do. Hello? Amen. Not with the pastor. Uh, the title of the message is, does God want me to participate? Mm. Don't do it for me. Right. Do it for the Lord. Yeah. Now, what's God want you? Well, that pastor. No, no, no. <laughs> Get me out of this. All right? I'm just the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Amen. 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 What's God want you to do? You know, what you be, you know what's good advice? God, I'll do anything you want me to do. If you don't want me to do it, God, it's because it's, you have something better for me. And you don't want me to be hurt. Amen. Amen. What's God want you to do? God, that's what you want me to do? I'll do it. Maybe tonight. You'd say, you know what, by the grace of God, I see. I see what it is historically and all that. I see it biblically. Maybe tonight you say, you know, by the grace of God, with God helping me, I'm not going to participate in that. Maybe that's what you need to do tonight. But here's what you need to do. Whatever God wants you to do. Amen. Amen? Yes. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heads bowed this evening and our eyes.